Hi guys, it's Luton here and I'm just introducing this video today for you. Now when I was over in Stockholm this week, uh, myself and Wintergore went down early in the morning to the studios of DICE and we were given the opportunity to interview Carl Magnus, pretty much one of the biggest names in Battlefield. He's the general manager of DICE. This video though, it was created on the fly. We had almost no time to prepare for this interview whatsoever. We didn't even know we were going to have it until we got there and so I had to try and get down there to record it on my camera. So there's a few little pieces that are not 100% perfect but remember that the important thing here is it's the content and what we're talking about. That is the important feature. Hope you enjoy it guys. Hi guys, it's Luton and Wintergore here, and uh, we're here with Carl from, uh, the, well, the head of DICE, <laughs> pretty much, is so, everyone in charge, and uh, we're here talking about Battlefield 4. So, Carl, what do you feel is some of the strongest elements moving forward into Battlefield 4 from Battlefield 3, one of the kind of core principles that you found in Battlefield 3 that you wanted to take forward mm -hmm. for anyone in Battlefield 4? Well, at the, the reveal event yesterday, we, we only talked about single player, so I can't mention what, what our thinking in these areas is when it comes to multiplayer. But specifically for, for single player, we have a, a couple of new things, that, or a couple of changes that we want to make. And one of them is specifically, we weren't entirely happy with the single player in BF3. It was a bit too linear, and it was a bit too controlling of the actual player experience. Um, which means that for now, in, in the demo that you, for instance, have seen online, uh, I hope, the, the big action stretch there in the construction site is an example of how we're going to change this. It means that we're going to take signature elements from multiplayer and bring it into single player to make it more interesting, uh, giving the, the player a more tactical choice, the use of vehicles, um, use of features like actually spotting the enemy to have your score suppress them, etc. so you can go and flank, etc. Seven of these kind of elements that just adds more to bringing a bit of that multiplayer sandbox into single player. That's, that's very important. Something I just wanted to find out as well, perhaps, was that uh, Onslaught mode was a really popular mode, and that obviously focused more towards the single player. And a lot of people commented that they would have liked to have seen that with Battlefield 3. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you would like to see in Battlefield 4? Well, we don't have co-op in Battlefield 4. Though, that we have made that decision. We're focusing everything we have on multiplayer and, and this single player. Um, I mean, I personally really like the, the Onslaught, even some of the, the floored part with it, but yeah. you could have really a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, even... I mean, that was basically rush maps that were turned into like co-op against bots, etc. Yeah. And even though that's not what we're building, but to some degrees it shares some similarities with you know the big open action bubble that we're going to have now in the single player, meaning that it's you against the AI. You have a lot of choice of how you're going to go about doing the uh, taking on the, the challenge at hand, so to say. Uh, yeah, how will you be looking at working with the community and, for example, YouTubers, clans, communities, um, throughout the production of Battlefield 4? Well, I'm not really the right person to answer that, perhaps. I mean, we, we have a full-on marketing campaign going on, and we're going to be working as much as we can with, uh, I don't know how to call it, like the grassroots of, of the community. Uh, we've always been a company that really cherish our connection with the community. Um, you know, the, the, the best way to get out, get our products out there and our games is to, of course, talk directly to the people out there. So as much as possible, we absolutely can do that. Um, so you'll be listening to like players' feedback, for example. Throughout. Well, we always do. We have always we have since the the launch of our games, we have always listened to the feedback coming out there. Now sometimes we do that secretly, you know, just following people or reading blogs or whatever. Sometimes we actually, you know, are more actually out there and commenting on it as well. But the sheer size of Battlefield is just staggering. So I mean, there is no way for us to be everywhere and comment on and react to all the kind of feedback and I, in all honesty I have, I have the deep most, uh, utmost deepest respect for the community but not all suggestions that we get are actually either doable or perhaps suitable for the products that we're doing. Uh, that doesn't mean that all feedback isn't good feedback, you know, we like to hear from, from everyone that, what they think about our products. I think it'd be fair to say that the Battlefield 3 multiplayer was unbelievably strong, you know, it really did move the whole series forward and, you know, put Battlefield out there against some other titles. Um, but one thing was the competitive element. Now, uh, again, I know you can't say too much about it, but um, from speaking to Lars, I know that he said, without saying anything, you guys are aware of that and you're going to sort of be looking forward to it. Would you sort of agree with that? Say that you're going to, it's an element that you, you are aware of. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely see Battlefield as, a, especially the, the multiplayer component of it, as a very competitive, you know, part of the game, of course, and multiplayer is the heart of, of any Battlefield game that we do, um, and that won't change moving forward. Uh, I can't, as you say, talk about the specifics here because we're not announcing them, but I can say that, for instance, eSport is an area that we are very interested in. Um, 
it's not as easy as some game developers like to think that it's just that you do a X, Y, and Z and everything is done. It's actually much bigger than that now. Um, there are some people that actually see this as a new phenomenon, and that's not true either for, for the people that have been involved in this scene. It's been around for a long time. It's just recently, it's really starting to take off perhaps more in semi-mainstream uh, online media, etc. Which is amazingly cool, by the way. Yeah. Um, so yes, we're very interested in this area, and we're definitely going to see what we can do. The single player, now um, obviously you said that maybe some people were not happy fully with the, the Battlefield 3 single player, and we saw a lot of the Battlefield 4 single player, and I got to talk to quite a few people last night about that, and you know, it sounds very really exciting. And um, for a lot of people said that they weren't too happy with it as well. Um, do you feel quite strongly that you really have made enough sort of changes that you're going to satisfy people, that it's going to be worth people taking you know, the time to look at it because, you know, as I say, I personally enjoyed it, and mm -hmm. I know some people did, but what would you say to people that didn't enjoy the Battlefield 3 and, and going into the next, next title? Well, it, it's a bit hard to say, actually, because we get this feedback from some people saying, oh, I didn't like it, etc., you know, I didn't play it, I only want to play multiplayer. They, uh, we often get the question as well, why do you even do single player at yeah. all? You know, Battlefield is a multiplayer game. Well, the fact is that we know that a lot of people play our games just for the single players as well. Uh, our ambition is, of course, that if they are that kind of player, we want them to experience the single player, then as quickly as possible, you know, when they're done with it, move over to start playing multiplayer as well. Um, that is very important for us because we, you know, the longevity of the product is in the multiplayer, and as I said before, it's what I consider to be the heart of, of the Battlefield game. Um, at the same time, you know, we are not at, in any way completely dishappy with the, the, uh, the single player in BF3. There were some really good parts about it, some yeah. very dramatic elements where you know, we feel that we perhaps control the player a bit too much and that's what we want to change. But I believe that if you like single player games, I think you're going to like uh, the, the, what we have cooked up now for, for Battlefield 4. Yeah. It's going to be a mix, there are going to be parts where we control you as the player, it's going to be more linear, where we really want you to like, you're going to experience this that we are controlling right now, dial the, the drama up to 11 basically. Yeah. And then when you get into the open areas, that's where the big change starts to come in, that that's where you have the options and, and to play it more in your way. Yeah. And um, I know, obviously, again, you can't talk about multiplayer too much, but from what we saw, that 17 minutes of single player mode and a lot of the kind of elements that go on in there, would you say that for people it would be a fair assumption that it's, it's quite a, you could translate a lot of elements from that into a multiplayer? From what you see, you could think, okay, this will work here, and you can, so it gives people a vague imagining of what it would be like? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's not that it's outspoken in such a way, but I mean, the single player can act as a tutorial for a lot of people before they go online. So controls will be the same, etc. So you'll learn, you know, for instance, when you, uh, when you target the, the enemies in single player, so your squad starts to suppress them, that should be the same kind of button press for actually spotting people in multiplayer, etc. You know, so you actually prepare them for going online afterwards. That's actually a good point because I think we all know that spotting is something that is not the best to put people in multiplayer. So to see that in single player, it would be a good translation for people going yeah. forward. So. Um, yeah, so the single player to me seems to have taken quite a lot of inspiration from the Battlefield Bad Company 2 single player in that the, obviously the players are in a squad. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of um, other ways have you looked at basically improving that, like the, the feeling that the player gets that he's connected in an actual squad and um, for example not just like a of running through a soldier where it's like sort of um, has no emotion basically. Well, th this is the the second big area of improvement I would argue in the single player that we have today, and that is if the one part is where we bring signature multiplayer elements into mm -hmm. single player, the other part is how we focus on the what we like to call the dramatic, human, and believable element of the actual game. Um, some things that we have changed, for instance, is that you now play one character throughout the entire game, mm -hmm. meaning to, we don't want to break the the immersion of you as as the player. Know who you are or what you're doing. We want that make them more easy to understand. But then, of course, in the interaction between you and the other characters, how we can make it much more dramatic in in between you and your squad mates. What's going on? Make the other characters much more recognizable, etc. That was another thing that wasn't very, very good in Battlefield Three. Um, in the scene, for instance, in the, the one of the first demos we did, where you're sitting in the APC, for instance, there were like about four other dudes in there. Mm -hmm. If you ask people who they were, they have no idea. It was like, well, there's a guy in a helmet and the fatigues, and yeah, there's three other guys like that. They couldn't be really be recognized. So that's what we're working a lot with, um, in combination of, of course, with you know, the real actors that we have in the game to make them more recognizable, to create more dramatic uh, elements in the story, etc. And uh, also, perhaps bringing the story a bit down, you know, it's not about the big war, the geopolitics. They are there in the background to, to help the backstory move forward. 
but what's at the game is actually about is the characters in, in themselves. Uh, that's what's important. I noticed in the multi, uh, sorry, in the single player, um, it seemed to have quite a, a gritty scene where you on one of the scenes you have to sort of saw the guy's leg with a knife. Um, do, is that something that you'll be looking at throughout the game, sort of um, giving it sort of more, more of a gritty feel with, like, for example, the goal which was shown there, and the guy's leg um, completely blown off? Well, I mean, it's not a, it's not on purpose that we just want to create a more gory game, absolutely not. Uh, it is a mature game, uh, as Battlefield 3 was as well, um, so we take the liberty to do these kind of strong scenes. Uh, I think it's really important to point out that we don't add them just to create some kind of a you know, fuss around yeah. it that will give us more attention. That's not why we do it. You, know, we, I, you might actually have noticed that in the demo, when you actually cut the leg, yeah, the camera looks away. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that we want to show somebody like... <laughs> you know, that's not the important yeah. part. What is the important for us is the, the, what I mentioned before, is the dramatic element, the human element, where you're looking into the eye of, uh, of Dunn there on the ground when he says, you know, you need to cut off my leg or, we, or I'm going to die. Uh, there's no other option. Uh, and then we keep that player interactivity and player autonomy, so it's up to you. If you okay, do you cut the leg? The fuel's about to explode from the helicopter, it's just leaking out. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That kind of stress on the situation, that is really important for us. It's not the actual leg being cut off. That's, that's just a, an effect of the situation or a, a situation they're in. So. What, what does pacing mean to you? Because to me, that's an important thing for movies, games, everything. The speed, which you go from one scene to another, and the, you know, the intensity of one scene. So that was one thing that I really took away from the single player. But thinking about it, that's something that really matters in the multiplayer, and specifically to Battlefield. Mm. Because a lot of titles seem to focus on the speed and the action, 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 action. And the moment you respawn, you run into another player almost yeah. immediately. With Battlefield, you always have the time to think, OK, how am I going to approach this move forward? Mm go around, then you have a very intense fight, then you might have time to regroup, move, take out another position. And that was something that was really strong we saw in the single player there as yeah. they moved through the game. But what does pacing mean to you when you're creating a title? How well, important is it to you? Pacing is extremely important, especially for more consciously when you create a single player game. Um, and even now in the demo we showed yesterday, as you can see there are a couple of time jumps in the demo, so that this mission is actually much longer in the real game. Um, so it's pretty high tempo even in this demo that we showed here. Um, the team that is building this are really conscious about the fact that we don't want to create what they before have called like a, you know, a 11 hour rock solo, which is just like <laughs> full on energy and then, you know, all the time throughout the game. That's not what we want to build because that is, you know, you know actually exhausting to, to take part in. We want to create a game where you have like the nice build ups of something, you have tension going on, something that builds up towards an, a crescendo or something, then you have something erupt and then you might have a calm moment again and you build these kind of dramatic curves in, in, you know, depending on the story and the mood and the style and tone that you want to get across with the di dialogue of the characters etc. It's very very important and I agree with what you said that you know multiplayer has different kinds of uh, tempo in them as well. We, we do see that some people like the much quicker tempo and they prefer perhaps playing team deathmatch on smaller maps like yeah. the close quarters or something yeah, yeah. and then you have people that you know, prefer a bit slower tempo and more tactical, or time to actually step back and be a bit more tactical. Mm. Maybe that's more of the conquest players, etc. Mm. Can I ask as well about the DLCs for Battlefield 3 when you mentioned close quarters? Now, a lot of people kind of speculated that what you guys were trying to do there was experiment with each one mm -hmm. to sort of gauge reaction. Mm -hmm. Was that the case, or were you trying to simply give people a lot of options as to what they were trying to do? Well, it's not so much about gauging reactions, I would say, because then, you know, it, it's, we have a separate team, or actually separate teams working on the expansion packs, and uh, just doing that to gauge a reaction would be a bit uh, expensive, actually. Yeah, exactly. But we definitely, but, it, but you're actually then on. I mean, we wanted to expand on the idea of what Battlefield can be. Uh, I've mentioned this before, that I see the Battlefield experience almost like a spectrum. If on one side of the spectrum you have, you know, Conquest Large, people that love the big open vehicle maps, etc. And on this side you have Team Deathmatch, tighter indoor maps, much faster, etc. Then we have shown that we can do the, the whole width in between here. Um, with the expansion packs in the premium campaign for Battlefield 3, we wanted to expand that spectrum in both directions. So, you know, Armored Kill has some of the biggest maps we've ever done, and then Close Quarters are probably some of the smallest maps we've ever done. And then with specific like thematic game modes in each one of them as well to give in new new interesting way of playing uh, playing Battlefield 3. So that was very conscious from us and we were very very happy with the results and mm -hmm. the feedback we've been getting is that people really loved it. Yeah. There are some people that you know they 
or just want to play the big maps, for instance, they perhaps did not like uh, close quarters as much as other people do. But at the same time, we want to try to satisfy as many people as possible that are enjoying our game. Yeah. Would you say that Battlefield 4 is a strong evolvement from Battlefield 3? I mean, it's not going to see the massive jump that we saw from Bad Company to Battlefield 3, but do you feel it's enough of an involvement? What would you say to people that, uh, you know, what they're expecting from this in terms of the, the, the strength of change that they're seeing? Well, it, it's definitely going to be a big step forward. I do know that we have some critics that might say that, oh, we need to change the setting. I expected sci-fi or something else, <laughs> otherwise it's not a big step forward. Well, I don't really agree with that. I believe that you can, we can stay in the same universe, which we are now, uh, because we, we feel that we have a lot of interesting story left to tell. We have a lot of characters that we, actually some that we want to bring back from the other game, but also new ones that we want to get in there. Um, at the same time, for the, the, the Battlefield players that have been with us for a long period of time, they know that innovation comes in many different shapes and forms. Uh, innovation does not have to be changing the entire setting. Innovation can be in something like how does the animation system work, or you know the kind of new gadgets or vehicles that we put in there, or anything from you know the, the new features that we can't talk about in multiplayer, for instance. So people will see this as a big step forward. Um, I really hope so. Yeah. But there's also the fact that we are on the brink of a you know great new transitions, to which we also yeah. can't talk about for yeah. for other reasons. But that is very very exciting. So more on that in the future. Carl, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay guys, so that was our interview with Carl Magnus, myself and Wintergore. Um, it was such a great opportunity, as I said in the beginning, and I really want to thank Carl, and I also want to thank Lars and Dan Sheridan for giving us the opportunity to go down and, and have that experience. Um, the entire trip that we had was an astonishing experience in itself, but to have these opportunities is something that just does not happen every single day. I think you would agree, guys, that from looking through that video, um, Carl gave us some really excellent insights things that you wouldn't get just from going to these events or from simply watching the trailer because people can break down trailers as much as they want to but as I've said before these kind of events are always about gleaning those little extra pieces of information and they're often about reading between the lines because looking just at what you can see is not the be all and end all it's about looking beyond that and seeing what else it is there that you can find out so thanks for watching this one today guys if you've enjoyed it please rate and share the video it really helps me it really will help winter as well if you go to his video and check out see what he's done with this interview um, so please go over to winter's channel check him out as i say if you've enjoyed mine then drop a subscribe but I just want to say again to thank everybody at DICE for putting on such an amazing event this week. It's meant the world to me. It's been such an amazing thing. And I never expected that I was going to have the opportunity to speak to Lars or Carl in such a way that I did this week. It's just been more than I really could have hoped for. And I look forward to going on a journey with you guys into Battlefield 4. I hope you'll come with me. I hope you'll join me for all the content that I'm going to be putting out over the next year going into Battlefield 4.